Hey guys, Steve and Brian here from Nuts Off Gaming. Uh, having a little, I guess, different type of uh, episode here where we're just kind of talking and you know, showing some footage, you know, in the background or whatever. But want to talk uh, this time about achievements and gamer score and trophies, just kind of in general and our thoughts on it. And, and mostly about. 100% completing games. Yeah, like so we have the completion series where we show uh, games that you can quickly and easily get every achievement in the game. So, uh, you know, a lot of our videos are on getting achievements and things like that. I mean, that's kind of the the backbone of our of our channel, really. So That's where we started at. So. Yeah. We'll just give our thoughts on uh, getting achievements and 100%ing the game, and we'll compare it We'll compare Xbox to PlayStation a bit. Yeah. Yeah, so, I mean, I guess, and for me, a, lot, a little bit of background for me. I've obviously, I mean, played video games my whole life. And uh, when the PS3 and Xbox 360, uh, I guess, when those came out, I was a PS3 guy. I played that all the time. Really many games in the beginning didn't have trophies. Um once you know achievements were going on for xbox 360 and how popular that was um the ps3 kind of started picking up on that and creating trophies for the games and stuff um i mean from now looking back on to pre achievement slash trophy days i don't even know the reason for playing games <laughs> like <laughs> like i it, like now, like, my goal is to 100% uh, achievements in a game. I mean, that's that's really what I look for when I get a game. I mean, that's that's the goal. I used to always joke with Steve that Steve doesn't actually enjoy playing video games. He just wants to get the achievements to 100%. And he, he doesn't... I used to think that he didn't even care about playing the campaign, playing the story mode. That if he could just play the game for one day, get all the achievements, and then return the game or get rid of the game, he would totally do it. That's what I thought. I used to not care about achievements. I just wanted to play the game, play the story, beat it on the hardest difficulty, and then I considered myself done. That's how I used to think. Yeah, I, it just, and you know, nowadays, like in the Xbox 360 days, it was, uh, I mean, it's like pretty much you look up someone, and bam, there it is. Like, there's their gamer score. Here's how many games they completed and stuff. I mean, it was, like, in your face. Like, that was, like, this is you. Like, <laughs> whatever, like, you did as far as gamer score. This is that what type of gamer you are. Yeah, that you've defined you. You've gotten this many achievements. You've completed this many games. Yeah, and, like, now it's, like, you got to go, like, really underground if you want to see anything, like, as far as like gamer score with your friends or something so and there's no way to tell how many yeah. games you've hundred percented yeah one probably one of my biggest pet peeves because that was like my my thing playing 360 like i want to see that number continually increase and i want that number to be higher than anyone i mean i would play there the were games shittiest that, games that i played I've ever heard of i'm not joking i went to GameStop and i bought like some Hannah Montana game, and I just feel like I went off, I peered offline so no one would see me play it, and I just got my 100%. Do you I, realize we could just look at your profile and it, see your completed games and see that Hannah Montana was there? It, yeah, but you gotta dig. So, like, you it shows your most recent 100%. So, like, I would I 100%ed that and then, like, reloaded up like five or six more games so it kind of it's like it clearing like, your browser history yeah when exactly you're searching for adult material <laughs> yeah so i i mean I, it was just all about buffing up my gamer score well particularly the the 100 percent um i i don't particularly care about gamer score so like a game that might have for a completion 200 gamer score versus a thousand that doesn't really matter to me it's a completing a game is completing a game um, gamer score can be irrelevant as well like I, it's hard like a, a tough achievement should be worth 100 gamer score 50 gamer score but that's not always the case we yeah. have a layers of fear video 
collecting your first like finding the first collectible is 50 gamer score there's an achievement race that i won by finding two achievements in layers of fear that were worth 50 gamer score each and it took me less than four minutes to yeah. find those achievements yeah so if they properly would score the the achievements based on how tough they actually are then i would take gamer score more seriously yeah it is very very frustrating when you can like like i just finished uh I actually just finished this week 100%ing uh, Batman Arkham Knight, and there's like, like one of the achievements was complete um, one of the combat maps with four different characters, there are four rounds in the map, and you have to have a perfect free flow bonus on each round with each of those four people. I mean, that took me probably just that one achievement out of the i don't know 130 achievements in the game that one took me about 15 hours by itself just spending 15 hours on it i got probably 50 other uh achievements and maybe dedicating 15 or 20 minutes to getting the same amount of gamer score like it just the the disproportion is frustrating that's why to me completing getting a hundred percent that's what is a much bigger feat than uh you know just the 200 gamer score or 50 gamer score or whatever it is so speaking of batman let's go back and let's talk about back batman arkham asylum which was you never forget your first that was the (laughs) game that got us into completing games so did I own it, or did you own you it? You owned it. Okay, so I had it, um, and we were just playing the, ga- playing the game normally, and I realized that I was close to getting all the achievements, and the only thing I had to do was the combat challenges left, I believe. Yeah. So, me and Steve, together, we're just like, let's just get all of these. Let's get all the achievements. That'd be something, that'd be really cool. So we just spent... You know, that night, just playing those combat achievements, trying to beat them all. Like, we were not very, even very good at that Batman game at the time. Like, you hadn't really played it that much, and no. I had just pretty much played the story on yeah. probably a normal difficulty or whatever. Like, I wasn't an expert at it, but we focused and we beat it, and it was such a, like, we were so happy when we 100% at that game, and then we decided to go and do it on Steve's account as well. Yeah, it was just... It was challenging, and that's what made it. That's what made it work good. It. Yeah, because you're like, okay, this is something that I have to invest some a little bit of time in and really get good at it. But now, it's over. I accomplished something, and like that's a great feeling. The and, reward was proportional to the yeah. time we put into it. Yeah. So it was really a, you know, wow. And it's, I mean, especially for a game like that too, like. There are the games on the completion series where, you know, you can probably 100% a game in 5 hours, 10 hours, something like that, pretty easily. And a lot even less than that. But in a game like Arkham Asylum where there's a drawn-out story, a lot of side missions, a lot of collectibles, uh, a lot of, you know, like the combat and predator challenges where there's a lot of hard things that you have to do and to get all those achievements i mean that feels really good that's that's a much bigger accomplishment but in the sense of a completed game i mean that is the same as you know a game that'll take you one hour to do or something i think i think the most famous easy 100 percent that i cannot do on the completion series because I don't think it's backwards compatible is um the airbender yeah the avatar last airbender yeah, yeah. 100 and, or you just do it's like a combo over yeah. and over again so yeah. you're basically just spamming this one button for like five minutes or maybe not even that yeah which I mean that's that's one that I never got that that's like that's the one like I always wish I got but never did because that's, I mean, that's super easy. You could just, like, go to... I don't think many places have it. 
probably because so many people would like, hey, I'm just going to go to GameStop, buy it, and then return it later that day. Like, yeah, hey, I didn't like this game or something. Like, right. <laughs> so I don't think many people have it anymore because of that. But, I mean, that was, I mean, I, I, I would assume that was like in the beginning stages of like one of the first games maybe to, not one of the very first games, but the first, one of the first games that, people kind of like caught on to the achievements yeah so <laughs> um so uh, obviously we have a, a lot of like for achievements and you know completing them there are some things though that i particularly have that i do not like about achievements or th like things that are very unnecessary obstacles in the way of completing a game so one that i have is doing monotonous tasks so um I think one thing is uh, that I can remember off the top of my head in the game, The Little Acre, um, that's on the completion series, there's an achievement for, there's this one part in the game where there's a, a little, I don't know, bag of water or something. You just have to poke the bag of water like 20 times or 50 times or something. Like it has nothing to do with the story. It's just like, hey, go up to this thing and just poke it 50 times so like you're literally just sitting there for two minutes five minutes just pressing a button like that that adds nothing to your experience in the game you didn't actually achieve anything you shouldn't get an achievement for it exactly like the what i really really like about achievements is it's forcing you to do things in the game it's forcing you to so basically i just like um being rewarded for doing things that Maybe you wouldn't do during the game. I like story-related achievements, too. They're they're fine. There's nothing wrong with that. But getting rewarded for playing the story, getting rewarded for doing things um, that maybe you wouldn't even do in the story to kind of explore the game, things like that, I, I like having achievements for. Just doing things just to do them, like... Like the Assassin's Creed glitch thing, where you just have to tap A during every cutscene. Yeah, I mean, I I still am fine with that. I I don't like it, but I get it because it's like technically. I don't think it changes the story at all, but it's a different angle, so it like kind of puts you in the story more. You're not like sitting with sitting back with uh, Altair. You're like going up and like there's a different view or something. I don't know, but I don't I don't like it. I thought it's dumb. I. It's I don't like it, but I get it. But something where like you have to just sit there and do something twenty times. It has nothing to do with anything. That is something that just is annoying. I also I'm not a big fan of getting achievements for beating each level. I'm fine with beating I, the game and getting achievements on various difficulties and like unlocking. So if I beat it on normal, I unlock the normal achievement and the easy achievement. But beating if there's 12 missions in the campaign, I shouldn't just get 12 random achievements for beating each level. I like it, because it's... I mean, it really caps off the... Alright, I finished this one. I'm I'm good. Like, it, you kind of know... I think that's know, the, the beating the game, the last achievement. That's like, alright, I beat the game. I actually I accomplished it. Beating one level, I don't feel is achievable worthy. I think, I think it is. So think of Call of Duty beating like it'll be like usually like maybe two chapters that kind of go together on veteran difficulty that makes me feel a lot better because playing on like veteran difficulty that's very difficult so i'm i would much rather get like little uh hey good jobs on the way towards my final one like i'd, I'd much rather take let's say they're gonna contribute 400 gamer score to completing the game on veteran I would like to get maybe 20 gamer score for 10 times and then a 200 gamer score as opposed to just one 400 gamer score. You know what I mean? Uh, I, I understand that the, it is tough. On the tougher difficulties, you should get some type of reward, but just beating it. Because you could, you could do that thing a hundred times and you get the same reward as someone who just actually played the level. Like, you can play the level a hundred times, die a hundred times, you still get the same reward as someone who played it successfully, like, knew what they were doing, has played the game well. There was something 
an old game for the GameCube. It was probably on multiple systems too, called it was Medal of Honor Frontline. You used to get a bronze, a gold, and a silver medal at the end of each level based on how much health you had. Now that's not the perfect system because you can like you can play the mission shitty, and if you just find a full health pack, then <laughs> yeah. you get a gold medal. But something more along those lines where based on how yeah. well you beat the game or beat the level you could get an achievement. Like, if you kill so many enemies, or or if it's a stealth mission, you don't get detected by so many enemies. Just more personalize the achievement towards the mission as opposed to just completing the mission. I would agree. I, I think that is a more rewarding um, than just completing the mission, for sure. But there are games where that's not really then, tracked. Then you shouldn't, so. you shouldn't have achievements for beating the yeah. mission. I agree to disagree. But anyways, that at least those are kind of fine as opposed to just the kind of stupid stuff. But so another thing that I don't like, like start the game. Like, <laughs> Oh yeah. Like, yeah. Like I, I used, credits. I used, uh, yeah, I used some cheap ones for achievement races for like, play, I, play I, this I, for I the first time. <laughs> so, um, but another, another type of achievement that I hate is, um, well, I mean, there's a, there's a couple more, but, uh, unrealistic expectations. So one that immediately comes to mind is seriously 3.0. Um, I am seriously. Yeah, I am never going to get that. I mean, that's that's too much. You're asking way too much of. We should see what the current percentage is. It's it has to be point zero one. It has to be point. It cannot be higher than that. I wonder, um, what, like, what is the minimum amount of hours that it would take someone yeah. to get a seriously achievement? Yeah, I I don't know. It's just, you're asking way too much. It's actually really, really greedy of any developer, whatever, to ask for that much time commitment to a game. Um, you're, you're basically saying... Only play our game. Exactly. Well, that I mean, they do want that. Yeah, they do Only want that. Game. But, but if you're playing, if you're trying to get seriously 3.0, you wouldn't have time to play Gears of War Judgment or exactly. Gears of War Four. You'd still be playing Gears of War Three. Exactly. So it's uh, so that kind of just turns me off. I mean, there, like, there are games that I won't buy just because the achieve. Like, there's one achievement that is like that's going to take forever. I I'm not going to get that, so it's not even worth me playing so i i th those are the types of ones that i hate there are other um as far as unrealistic um like there are online achievements that i hate like um you know i can think of like madden or nba or something where how about all the overwatch achievements that we go for on the reg that we can't that's get, true get, yeah uh, those are those are difficult, but I at least get that because it's like, okay, they want you, they want to force you to, I don't want to say necessarily be a main with all those different characters, but actually play as the different characters and play enough where you're doing something pretty challenging. So there's definitely stupid ones like... Teleport 20 people and is that one life or one, ga one game? One game, which I mean... That's tough. It's tough, but I... I mean, I don't think that one's that terrible. That's just getting the alt like three all or four of, times. A lot but, of those achievements are based on. Well, the game is based on playing cooperatively with your team. All those achievements are pretty much individualized. But you need your team to get those yeah. done. Like it's hard to get a a quad kill with a death blossom unless like yeah. your team is kind of funneling them like you have a Zarya gra grab yeah. time going on or maybe a May freeze like it's either perfect like all the stars align and you just happen to jump on the point when there's four people there or you need your team to help you yeah I like, think a achievement should be I did this not we did this yeah and I mean we tried when Arissa came out we tried for a long time trying to get the halt state achievement you just you need it's things that you can't really just do. You need luck with it. You need like the enemy team to be kind of together to start with, and then you need your team. Like the stars kind of have to align. You can't just, hey, I'm gonna try and do this, and then 
devote a couple games to it and get it. You really need some luck and everything to kind of go your way. Now, there, there are some achievements that are, you know, fine in that game where there, you can probably just dedicate a game or two and um, you'll be able to get it, but there are some that are just way too hard. But, and we may. I mean, Overwatch is just a game we play a lot. That's yeah. why we're talking about it. If we did dedicate enough time to each character, we probably could... If we played it, played enough of each character and dedicated enough time, we probably could get all the achievements. But. Yeah, true. But, I mean, things that are were coming to mind bringing this up is, like, Madden and NBA. Like, their, their online achievements, which is fine. I mean, encourage people to play online. But there's ones like win 10 games in a row online. And if someone quits on you in, like, the fourth quarter with two minutes left... That does that like negates your winning record. So it stops your yeah. Streak. So yeah. So it stops your streak and stuff. Well, that, so that's like, just a flaw. Yeah, I, th I think that that is achievement worthy. I think that one mechanic of them quitting because I'm assuming that happens a lot. Where the oh game's yeah, out if, of if reach. you know you're gonna lose, you just quit. I mean, what's I mean, what's your penalty for that? <laughs> we should talk about this in another video, but. Quitting early, I definitely want to discuss that at some point. So be yeah. on the lookout for that. <laughs> I have my thoughts on people quitting early. <laughs> Anyways, so yeah, so so we have the you know monotonous achievements that I don't like. We have the unrealistically hard achievements, the online achievements, and then the last one that I have written down at least. The last one is uh, glitched achieve. Well, it's a kind of covering two things: glitched achievements. Um, which, you know, you do everything you need to, and for some reason it doesn't pop, and you have to kind of try and find a workaround or do it all over again. That really pisses me off. Um, and then extinct achievements. So, things that you can no longer do. So, using Overwatch as an example again, um, Junkenstein's Revenge is one where you have to beat that. Um, I didn't even have the game at that time, so now... Well, we don't know that at the moment. At the moment, but as of right now, as of right now, that's an unobtainable achievement. You yes. cannot get that achievement, um, no matter how hard you try, because the game mode is not available. So having those types of achievements, that that's really not fair, and to me, that's something that really would make me not want to get a game. I remember, like, quite a few years back, there was an MLB game where you needed to play on the All-Star there's like a you know a game of the day or whatever that you could play like that was a game mode you can just play hey this is the best matchup we think today one of the achievements was play on that year's all-star game like the all play the all-star game as the game of the day so you had to play on that day online or you could not get the achievement and then they eventually shut down the online server, so you couldn't. Get you could it. no. You you had to play on that day. You had to play the All Star game oh, on that day. So, th so on that you year, know, two thousand. So July second, two thousand fifteen. Yeah, that was the only day you could possibly get that achievement. How about when <laughs> this this kind of correlates with multiplayer achievements? When they turn off the online servers and yeah. they have multiplayer achievements, you can't get those anymore. Yeah, and like people don't play like uh, what Gotham City Imposters. Like, people just don't play those game mode. Like, you have to win one in every game mode on every map or something like you, that. You can't find... Yeah, you cannot find a game. And like, every <laughs> online achievements, you can never get custom game. You can never get them from custom games because people will cheat, obviously. Yeah. But what are you supposed to do when no one's playing the game mode? Right. So, that those kind of things are... Gears kind of... They have an idea they kind of have a way of fixing it. Like, they have the... With the bots? With the bots. Yeah. So, that always leave that could lead to a potential possibility of games continuing on even if no one plays it you can get achievements yeah with bots being there there is some room to work with that so i i'd like to see where where multiplayer achievements progress on that on that front yeah that would be nice um so i mean those are the the uh the main uh things that i what really about hate. when you 100 percent a game and then DLC comes out. Do yeah. you feel that you should still have... Like, what if you don't want to buy the DLC? What if you're done with the game, you don't want it? What if you, you sold the game back, or you deleted it off your hard drive, you don't, you don't feel like you want to go back to it, but they released a DLC for it 
with achievements. Do you feel like your 100% should still stand? Um, I mean, this is a tricky question. To me, your 100% is not... I mean, it tech, for the vanilla game, yes, you did 100%. However, you now did not do everything in the game. So I, I would say it does not count as a 100%. But it's also up to the game to be somewhat upfront, saying that, uh, like, releasing the DLC in a reasonable time. So, like, if you... One hundred, like I'd say, three months is a pretty reasonable time to release a DLC. But if you're waiting like six months or a year to release something, um, like for the first time, or like because you know a lot of games put out like a season pass or something like that, so you'll get everything and you know things are coming. Um, so at least being upfront and saying that there will be DLC, then yeah, that and it's kind of their way of you know, keeping the game interesting to, or like adding features to the game, which I like, you, you want to get more replayability. What I don't like is when you have to spend more money on the game. That I feel you already like bought. the vanilla game, I, I don't know how, if they do this or not. I feel like on like the achievement screen, in addition to bringing back the, your completed game so that you can see it, they need to do a lot with the Xbox, like home page and dashboard stuff, but they should show, yeah, if maybe they do show it, your percentages of 100% in the game, and that which should be the vanilla game, then you can 110% the game by getting the DLC, 120% in it if you if you 100% the next DLC pack. Yeah, that's but how then, I think. Yeah. The DLC is additional content, so it should be in in addition to 100%. The game. In, in, I think the, the vanilla game is zero to one hundred percent. DLC is additional stuff after that, so it's over a hundred percent. But I would say even in in theory, though, you as yourself, well, the DLC isn't going to be harder than the regular game, pretty much in most cases. So it's something that you can do. It's just kind of an extra burden. You don't want to have a game where you beat the vanilla game and then you have lingering achievements like i would that would frustrate me and annoy me where i would have to get the game back just to do the dlc or something like i couldn't have lingering achievements out there i don't want to have to so i buy a 60 dollar game i don't want to have to spend another 60 bucks just to get another 10 achievements just so i 100 well, percent the game so you have a you have a 60 dollar game with 30 achievements you 100 percent it and then they release three DLCs for 20 bucks each, and then you get 10 more achievements. And what if the DLC sucks? What if the game wasn't even that good? I I don't... That, that's just my opinion, and I'm sticking to it. <laughs> I, think, I think it's fine to have the DLC and then do it, because it is nice to... I mean, depending on when you get the... Yeah, if you get the game the day it comes out, it's probably going to be more frustrating. But I, I don't typically like to spend the you know retail coming out price really on any game i don't know the last time i did that i like to wait until it goes on sale or something and at that point whatever dlc is out is already going to be out so i already know what i'm kind of getting into yeah i'm not i i if i really want a game out I'll, I'll pre-order it all or i'll buy it when i hear that it's good so i'm a little more i'm not as frugal with money as well, I'm more cost efficient. Achievements cost money. And so, my last point that I want to bring up is trophies versus achievements. And all, all I really want to talk about is you get a platinum trophy, I believe. Correct me in the comments if, comments if I'm wrong. For getting all the all the other achievements, you get the platinum trophy. Do you think there should be something similar? And I actually don't know how. It works for DLC no. with, with trophies. Like, if you lose your Platinum Trophy, if they add more trophies for the DLC, I don't know how that works. Feel free to tell me. Do you think there should be something similar? Some type of... Aside from the completion game, the 100% or completed game section, do you think you should get some thing? Some thing, I guess. I mean, I guess... Uh, as far as gamer score, no. But, I mean, maybe it'd be nice to have... 
an achievement with zero gamer score, like complete well, game. I don't think trophies have score. I think it's well, just, they have bronze, silver, gold. They, yeah, they just keep track of the number that you have. Yeah, but I mean, you can kind of relate that to a gamer score number. Like I think bronze. Or maybe is, they do have scores now. I don't know. I doubt. I thought that they didn't, but. Who knows? I, I Let think, us know. Yeah, I think you can kind of correlate them to gamer score amounts, though. So, like, you can correlate. Well, we just said before that gamer score amounts are irrelevant because they just yeah, they're arbitrary they are. numbers. They I are. feel like I wouldn't care about them. I don't care about gamer score either. I, I care about the complete. But, well, I, I don't think we can compare them to to PlayStation trophies because we don't know if the PlayStation trophies, like if the bronze ones are the easy ones, we just are assuming that they are. Yeah. You can't compare that to a five gamer score achievement because this one could be something really hard. That's so true. I, I think we can't we can't make that correlation. Yeah. At least not. I guess so. Yeah. To me, I mean, to me, the platinum trophy. I mean, if that's how it is, it'd be however many platinum trophies you have. That's how many hundred percents you have. So it's the same thing as looking. I just wish there was something more obvious on Xbox One, seeing how many completed games you have. And being able to compare that easily to your friends, so that I, I don't really care to get a, a final achievement after getting all the other achievements. That doesn't really mean anything to me. I just want to see somewhere centralized. Hey, this is how many games you have fully completed in an achievement sense. And I don't think that that this is a we're not in the majority here in wanting to see completed games. I think some people just like having high gamer scoring. They don't care about yeah. it. if they have one lingering achievement. They may not care. I'm sure that there's people out there, and there's there's definitely people who don't even care about achievements at all. Oh yeah, I mean look at just look at the percentages on most achievements. I mean, there's like <laughs> really really easy achievements you can get that are rare. I mean like less than five percent of people have them. What so about like, <laughs> um? Let's just briefly. What are um? What, how do they decide what's a rare achievement? I'm almost box? positive it's just the percentage of people that have it. I think it's under 10%. So they it don't might have be rare achievements like right out the gate? Well, like, like when, do, when do rare achievements become available? Like when do you know that I think it might be out of the gate. Like when so I then played, they, you can't tell by the percentage. Then. Well, everyone's playing kind of at the same time. Once it comes out, everyone's sort of playing it. So together so it's like complete like, complete level one i mean that's not going to be a rare achievement but collect all the collectibles in the game that's going to be a rare achievement i don't think there should be rare achievements either i i don't care just, just make just make harder or more time consuming I, achievements higher gamer score who cares about if it's rare or not i don't care about it being rare or not i do like seeing how the percentage of people that have it though just so when i get a I guess one that is rare, I can say like, wow, I can't believe 95% of the people don't have this achievement and I just did it in five minutes or something, you know? What is the highest percentage achievement that you've seen? Uh, I don't think I've seen anything in the 90s. I think 80, maybe 88% is the highest and that'd be like complete level one on a game or something. Uh, have you seen anything in the 90s? I don't, I don't pay that much attention to the percentages. Normally when I do... It's for something that's small, so I only look at stuff yeah. that's like less than twenty percent. Because yeah. pro I probably are if it's in the nineties or the eighties or the seventies, I probably already have the achievement, so I, I wouldn't pay attention. I don't really pay, look at the achievements I've already gotten unless I'm like making a checklist of this is what I need to do. Mm -hmm. So, all right, well, so I guess that those are our kind of comments on achievements. Let us know your comments. What you guys think? Uh, do you like? the current format i mean is it uh do you also wish that there was something in the showing your completed games if so maybe how, would, we how can... would you change achievements what are your yeah in the comments below let us know what type of achievements you liked what times you didn't how you feel about gamer score yeah i'm sure that let us know all this stuff yeah and... we're just scratching the surface here so <laughs> all right well thanks for watching this video and if you like this style uh you can well, it's not really relevant anymore, but you can, we have a Mercy video where we talked about our thoughts on what we think the Mercy changes should have been, and uh, we plan on making more of these, so leave some suggestions for types of videos that you want us to, or types of games or stuff that you want us to talk about, and we'll look into it. Yeah. So, all right, we'll see you guys next time. Thanks, guys. Mm -hmm.